Hello friends, in this video, I will be discussing about annealing and its type. I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. Let us start. Annealing is a type of heat treatment where we are heating the sample or the component in a furnace to an elevated temperature and we are holding the material at that temperature for a period of time and we are cooling very slowly. That is the main important point we have to remember when we are talking about annealing is that we are cooling the material very slowly and that too inside the furnace. Annealing is mainly carried out to relieve internal stresses to increase the softness of the material to make the material little bit tougher. Also it is used to produce a specific microstructure. All these important factors we will see in the upcoming slides. A variety of annealing heat treatments are available and we will be looking at specifically four types of heat treatment which comes under annealing and each and every one of these heat treatment are used to produce specific microstructure and these specific microstructure are related to certain mechanical properties. Three stages of annealing are heating the material to a specified desired temperature holding or sometimes also called as soaking the material at a particular temperature and then finally cooling the material to room temperature inside the furnace. Time is the most important factor in annealing and we know heat treatment mainly depends on how we cool the material, the rate of cooling. So how we cool the material is very important when we consider any type of heat treatment. And one more thing is very important, depending on the size and the geometry of the material, sometimes it is possible that the internal temperature of the material and the outside temperature of the material is not equal and because of all these factors the, the shape and the size the material tends to crack and it is prone to warping and warpage. During heating and cooling there are a lot of temperature gradients that exist in the material. The outside temperature that means the temperature at the surface and the internal temperature of the material during heat treatment is different sometimes. So we have to make sure that the temperature is same. If not, then there might be a lot of defects that come into place. So let us start with the first type of annealing. The first annealing is called as full annealing and it is mainly carried out on low carbon steel and medium carbon steel. Mainly these materials go through a lot of plastic deformation. They are machinable material and they have a wide variety of use. They are machinable. So they are used in lot of different application and during these application these material go under lot of plastic deformation. To recover the ductility of the material we mainly carry out full annealing of such materials. So here is the phase diagram of iron and iron carbide and we will be looking what is the range of the annealing temperature. Here if you see for the compositions which are less than the eutectoid we go to about 50 degrees more then A3 line and for the compositions which are beyond eutectoid we go above A1 line. Why such cases there we will see in the next slide. When we heat above A3 line for composition which are less than the eutectoid we are making sure that the entire material is in the austenitic range and we have to heat the material and hold at that temperature for some time so that the entire material the in and out the phase changes to austenite that is the main thing which we have to take care. So many times the students ask that why we have to heat the material just above A1 line for compositions which are greater than the eutectoid. So here is the answer for that. For compositions above eutectoid what happens is if we heat beyond A3 line or ACM line what we see is that we have lot of cementide in them and the problem is that it has that pro eutectoid cementide and if we heat to th that range what will happen is when the material is cooled that cementide will segregate around the grain boundary will sit around the grain boundary and we know that cementide is very hard material so when the dislocations they try to move in the material they are blocked by these cementide which are sitting along the grain boundary and the purpose of annealing is basically defeated. Because in annealing we want the material to be more pliable. But here when the material has cementite sitting around the grain boundary, the plasticity of the material is gone and the material behaves differently. That means it is supposed to be soft but because of that cementite it is now appears to be more harder. 
in annealing the material is furnace cool that means you keep the material in the furnace and you turn off the furnace and the material along with the furnace comes to room temperature and this takes lot of time maybe it takes around one day sometimes 24 hours 20 hours for the entire furnace to come to room temperature and the result here is coarse perlite coarse perlite means the grain of perlite is very big in size and that means if the grains are bigger the material is more softer and ductile here is the cycle of annealing and the structural changes that happen so initially at room temperature when we start annealing we have ferrite and perlite then we heat above a1 as we are heating we heat above a1 and we have austenite and ferrite then we reach A3 line and we heat above A3 line, the entire structure is now fine grain austenite. After that we do furnace cooling and as we cool when the material reaches room temperature, it is ferrite plus perlite but here the grains are equiaxed and they are equally distributed and the material is very softer. Here is an example of continuous cooling transformation of annealing. And we have two cooling curves shown here, one is for annealing and one is for normalizing. We will come to normalizing in an another video. But here let us take a look at the full annealing cooling curve. So here in this image we are seeing time versus temperature and the transformation. So we are seeing that when we cool the material very slowly, the end result, the end product is coarse perlite. Next heat treatment related to annealing is sparodizing. Now what is sparodizing? So after annealing sometimes it may also appear that the material is still very hard and it is difficult to machine. So what we can do in that case? In that case we can go for sparodizing. When we get sparodized structure the material is become more softer and it is more machinable and pliable. So that is the reason we go for sparodizing even after annealing. Now what is the range of sparodizing? So in sparodizing what happens is we are hitting the material just below A1 line. So we are not doing any phase change. But what happens is the iron carbide particles they come together and they form a spear like structure. So we have some spear like structure and we have ferrite throughout. In sparodizing heat treatment there is a coalescence of Fe3C particles to form spheroid particles. The alloy heated at a temperature just below A1 line and maybe around 700 degrees Celsius because A1 line is 727. So we are heating just below the A1 line and we are heating it for around 15 to 20 hours, maybe 25 hours and then we are allowing the material to form these spheres or spheroid particles in the matrix. This is the sparodization of cementide. Here you can see four images. So there is no phase change. First of all, you need to remember that there is no phase change. Lamellar cementide. So we have lamellar cementide which is there that will coalesce together and it will form the spheres or spheroid particle and that will be in the matrix of ferrite. This is an image of the microstructure of sparodization or the sparodized steel here. You can see that the white phase which is there is the ferrite phase and the small spheroids, the black color spheroids are nothing but cementite. The third heat treatment related to annealing is process annealing. So the name suggests that it is carried out during any processing of the material. So during the processing of the material, the material becomes very hard because of strain hardening or work hardening. So we have to get rid of that strain hardening so that we have to do further plastic deformation on that. So what is to be done? We are doing intermittent annealing so that after processing we are doing annealing the material becomes softer again we are processing the material. So this cycle goes on and on and finally the material can be extensively deformed when we do process annealing. Mainly during the operations like rolling and forging all these operations when they are there they are there to reduce the size of the material but during the rolling process what happens is further deformation or further rolling of the material into smaller sizes is not possible so then what is to be done so in the middle of that particular ro rolling operation we can do certain heat treatment so that the material the grains again become softer and further rolling of that material is possible so these are some of the stages of process annealing. So material is deformed, the crystal is deformed. Then what happens is we have to give some sort of process annealing and we are going up to the recrystallization stage because we want to have some new crystal which are fine. And again after that the material is deformed. So there is a cycle of deformed grains, recrystallization, then again the material is deformed and it goes on and on. But we have to make sure that we don't have to supply too much heat to the material 
and we don't have to go to a stage of grain growth. So I hope you remember recovery, recrystallization and grain growth. So we are just going to a temperature where we are just doing some recrystallization of the grains. We are not going to the temperature of grain growth. Here is an example of a cold work steel. So when you are cold working any material, what happens? The grain get elongated in some direction. Here you can see the example of that. So because of that elongation, further deformation is not possible here. Means it is possible but not extensively. So what can be done? So we have to do that process annealing and then we can see that the grains are now equiaxed and they are more pliable and we can carry out some more plastic deformation. The fourth type of annealing is stress relief annealing. So why we want to remove the internal stresses and how come the internal stresses are there in the material and when they come in the material. So sometimes during plastic deformation process such as machining and grinding there are a lot of internal stresses in the material. If these stresses are not removed the material is prone to failure and crack and it might fracture. So non-uniform cooling of a piece sometimes it happens during the process of fabrication like welding and so on. So the material is heated to a very high temperature but when it is cooled there is some non-uniform cooling. Because of that non-uniform cooling again we have lot of internal stresses which are which we have to remove. Also during phase transformation uh, there are lot of changes in the product because of cooling and heating and because of that the phases might have different density. So we have to bring the uniform density in the material and again because of that we have to do stress relief annealing and if all these factors are not taken into consideration there might be lot of distortion in the material the material might develop lot of warpage and it might crack. So what is the temperature range of stress relief annealing? Stress relief annealing the temperature range is very low. It is only up to the recovery temperature and mainly most of the effects like the cold working effect all these effects are not affected. So we are heating to a very low temperature holding at that temperature for some time so that the internal stresses are relieved and we are cooling the material finally at the room temperature. So let us summarize what we have seen in this video. So we have seen four types of heat treatment related to annealing. So we have seen full annealing, we have seen sparodizing, we have seen process annealing and we have seen stress relief annealing. So in the normal annealing that is full annealing, we are doing it to relieve the internal stresses, increase the ductility of the material and to make the material little bit more tougher and to get a specific microstructure. Sparodizing, we are doing sparodizing to make the material more softer. Sometimes when we do annealing, it is possible that the material is still very hard and it is not pliable. We can't do machining on that. So sparodizing is a type of heat treatment given to the material so that the material becomes more pliable and extensive plastic deformation is possible on that material. The third one is process annealing. So in process annealing, Whenever we are doing any processing on the material, lot of work hardening and strain hardening is there in the material. So further deformation of the material is not possible. So we have to give certain type of annealing heat treatment where we are heating the material so that we can have some recrystallized grain and further deformation is possible. The fourth one which is not listed here but we know and we have seen is stress relief annealing. In stress relief annealing we are just heating the material to a recovery temperature nothing is affected even the cold working is not affected and we are having the same structure the same thing only the internal stresses are relieved if these internal stresses are not relieved the material can have warpage it can have distortion finally it can crack and it can fail so i hope you understood about annealing and its types thanks for watching all the best